Yes, so today's topic of the session is bioinformatics, concepts and applications. So in this session, we will be talking about the introduction to bioinformatics because many of the participants in this certificate course are from chemistry background. Some students are from botany background. Some are from the microbiology department. And there are many students from the biotechnology as well. So those who do not have the idea about the bioinformatics, today I will decipher uh, to the world of bioinformatics, how it started and what are its applications, okay? So let us begin. Now, in biology or in any sciences today, this quantitation and quantitative tools are indispensable. So when I say indispensable, it means that they are absolutely necessary, they are absolutely important tools in modern biology. And that is true for all sciences like physics, chemistry, or Now, what is the meaning of quantitation tools? Now, quantitation tools are the tools with which we are able to measure something, right? For example, you, in case of botany, we measure the leaf area by using some tools or in case of chemistry you measure the pH of the solution by using pH meter right in case of uh, biochemical assay we measure the absorbance of a particular solution by using spectrophotometer or colorimeter now all these tools are required for the quantitation for the measurement purpose and for measurement purpose these tools are absolutely important in biology today. But when we measure something, we do not stop there. We also perform the analysis of those readings, of that data, right? For example, if you read the absorbance, if you take the OD optical density of the standard solution, you plot the graph of that standard solution, right? You get the absorbance of that particular concentration and you prepare a standard curve or a standard plot right and on the basis of that standard plot you find out the straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c so in that m is your slope and c is your y intercept right and on the basis of that you find out the concentration of an unknown so whatever you do by using those readings means preparing a standard curve and finding out the concentration of an unknown is actually quantitative analysis. So for that purpose, now if you have very few readings, if you have very very few readings, if you have very few readings, then you can use graph paper. Ka use karke wo kar sakte. But if you have hundreds of readings, then it will be of course uh, a tedious job for a human being to do that analysis. Nowadays, for quantitative analysis, we use the tool called as Microsoft Excel. Suppose you have multiple readings, let's say you have 100 readings of a standard. Then what you will do? You will put those readings into Microsoft Excel. And in the Microsoft Excel itself, you will plot a standard graph. And that Excel will also tell you the straight line equation, y is equal to mx plus c. And on the basis of that, you can determine the concentration of unknown. So these are very basic examples of quantitation tools and quantitative tools. So you have to understand the difference. Quantitation tools are used for measurement purpose. Quantitation tools जो है वो हम लोग किसके लिए use करने वाले हैं measurement के लिए. वो एक तो आपका distance measure होगा, area का measure होगा, pH का measure हो सकता है, या तो फिर absorbance का measure हो सकता है. It could be anything. So we use instruments. We use instrument for the measurement purpose, for the quantitation purpose. But when we measure something, we get what we get? We get data. Milta hai. So that data, those readings, can be analyzed with the help of quantitative tools. Means by using softwares, we can analyze that data. Right? And in modern biology, we have enormous amount of data. We are determining the sequence of DNA, we are determining the sequence of protein, 
and a large amount of data is being synthesized right so in order to analyze that data we require some system we require some software which are called as quantitative tools and we also require databases for the storage of that data so that's why it is said that quantitation and quantitative tools are indispensable in modern biology understand so if you if you see the development of biology <clears throat> initially when there were no microscopes people were working at the organism level right then at the organ level then at the tissue level so with the help of microscope we can see the cell so they started working at the cellular level then we come to know that this cell is made up of different types of biomolecules so we started to work at the subcellular level we discover cell organelles and then we started to work at the molecular level molecular biology right so this paradigm are shifting day by day because of advancement in technology now bioinformatics is a discipline of quantitative analysis of information related to biological macromolecules with the help of computers now uh, whenever uh, we want to do anything in our day to day life we are we are using our mobile phones agar aapko simple sa calculation karna hai kuch addition karna hai subtraction karna hai multiplication karna hai that calculator part is there in your mobile phone right agar aapke notice board pe aaj koi bhi notice lagti hai to aap kya karte ho we immediately take a photograph of that notice right and you save it in your computer that is small computer that is your mobile phone right or any other different type of analysis we want to do we can do it with the help of either mobile phone or we can do it with the help of our computer similarly in the field of pathology in the field of biology when we want to analyze the data of biological macromolecules we can use computers and in bioinformatics we actually <coughs> uh quantitatively analyze the information related to biological macromolecule with the help of computers because that information that data is such a huge that manual analysis or manual storage of that data is not possible right and many of the impossible task we are doing today with the help of computers so i will take you through some historical milestones in the field of bioinformatics that what happened in the field of molecular biology and computer science that lead to the development of a very new information oriented field called as bioinformatics so bioinformatics has evolved or it has developed because of advancement in molecular biology and computer science over the past 30 to 40 years so the first first database that was constructed it was constructed in 1965 by margaret dehoff and it was constructed for the storage of protein sequences and structure the name of that database was atlas of protein sequence and structure that was the first database that was constructed for uh, in the field of biology for the storage of protein sequences and structure so it was a very uh, important historical event that happened and in early 1970s the brookhaven national laboratory established the protein data bank for archiving three dimensional protein structures so you know these biomolecules they have 3d structures and we can determine the 3d structures of this biomolecule by using some experimental techniques like x ray crystallography or nmr so when this protein structures were determined those protein structures were stored in the database called as protein data bank which was established by brookhaven national laboratory now when this when this database was started at that time less than a dozen of protein structure were present in that database but now the number has increased to around 0.2 million it's uh, the figure that is quoted on the screen it is now changed the number has increased to more than 2 lakh structures 
टूडे ओके देन अनदर माइल स्टोन वॉज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस ग्लोबल अलाइनमेंट टूल और ग्लोबल अलाइनमेंट अलगोरिदम बाई निडलमैन एंड बुंच इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटीज देन चाओ एंड फाजमिन दे डेवलप वन अलगोरिदम फॉर प्रोटीन सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर प्रोडिक्शन इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फोर then in 1980s there was establishment of important database known as gen bank then william pearson he developed a database search tool called as fastay and then the stephen alt school developed another database search tool called as blast that is basic local alignment search tool and in late 1980s human genome project was started human genome project and this human genome project gave a major boost for the development of bioinformatics and finally when in internet was become widespread at that time it result into instant access to the information instant exchange of information that is available in the biological database so uh, when we say that bioinformatics develop as a branch because of advancement in the field of molecular biology and computer science we can actually correlate about the historical events in the molecular biology and the establishment of databases or development of some computational tools in the field of bioinformatics now i will i will uh, take you to more historical events than this 1953 let us see the uh, second half part of the 19th century okay everyone can see the screen yes yes sir okay 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 so many of the students are uh, of the chemistry background but they must have studied all of you must have studied biology in your 11th and 12th or you uh, you must have one subject botany or zoology in your bsc is there anyone else who did not have biology in 11th or 12th or did not have botany zoology in, the, in their bsc is there any candidate here okay so i guess there is no one from the non biology background so uh, what happened in 19th century uh, there was one scientist frederick misher and this frederick misher he discover a material from the nucleus he isolated the nucleus and then he isolate the material from the nucleus and he named that material as a nuclein the purpose to give that name uh, that material name nuclein was it was isolated from the nucleus so that's why he gave the name nuclein later on later on people find out that the nature of this nuclein material is acidic so they changed the name of that material to nucleic acid they changed the name of that material to nucleic acid okay now you know the father of genetics is gregor johann mendel and he did the very first uh, experiments in the field of genetics on the pea plant and he discover factors he named that material factor which transmit the traits which transmit the characteristics from one generation to the next generation but sanger uh, sorry uh, this uh, gregor johann mendel did not know that factor which is transmitting the characteristics from one generation to the next generation is a dna right and frederick misher also did not know that the material that he has isolated that is nuclein is actually the genetic material later on in the early 20th century uh, frederick griffith he performed one, exper one experiment very fa uh, famous experiment ye humne shayad 12th standard mein bhi aapne padha hoga uh, griffith experiment karke yes did you know griffith experiment yes sir i hope every one of you have learned that griffith experiment in the biology in the 12th standard so what he did he used the two strains of streptococcus pneumoniae one was pathogenic virulent and other one was non virulent right so in the stage of his experiment he heat killed the pathogenic strain 
and he mix that heat kill pathogenic strain with the non pathogenic or a virulent strain and when he injected that non virulent strain to the mice mice dies so he concluded that there is some transforming principle is present which transform the non virulent strain into virulent strain that transforming principle is actually dna later on every macleod and mccarty they prove that dna is a genetic material and uh, which was called as a transforming factor by the griffith and later on in 1950s itself hershey and chase hershey and chase they again prove by using the experiment done on the bacteriophage that dna is a genetic material and finally we believe that dna is a genetic material okay now suddenly the genetic this dna got very importance because it was a genetic material it was responsible for expression of the characteristics and it was responsible for the inheritance of the characteristics from one generation to next generation understand then in 1953 two scientists watson and crick they used the data of x ray diffraction which was the work was done by roser and flanklin and they also used the knowledge of biochemistry of the dna and by using this x ray diffraction pattern of the dna and biochemistry of the dna they prepare one model of the dna structure that model we call as a double helix model and later on we come to know the double helix model which was proposed by watson and crick was true and they received nobel prize for this discovery then in 1955 frederick sanger he determined the sequence of insulin protein so all of you know insulin protein all the proteins are made up of amino acids so he actually determined the amino acid sequence of insulin protein and he received he was the first person to determine the sequence of any of the protein in the human history so he was awarded with the nobel prize for the determining the sequence of insulin protein then in 1977 again uh, he uh, discover a method for dna sequencing which we called as sanger's di deoxy dna sequencing method and there was another method also developed during the same time that was a maxam and gilbert method it was a chemical method of dna sequencing so again frederick sanger received nobel prize in the chemistry for discovery of dna sequencing method look initially he did insulin protein sequencing for that purpose he received nobel prize in the chemistry again he discovered a new technique or invented a new technique for dna sequencing so he received nobel prize in the chemistry again now frederick sanger is a second person in the history who received nobel prize twice in the same field there are people there are people who received nobel prize twice but in the different fields there are two peoples only in the world who have no, received nobel prize twice in the same field the another person is from physics he received nobel prize twice in the physics and frederick sanger was a person who received nobel prize twice in the field of chemistry then in 1985 pcr was invented pcr stands for polymerase chain reaction right so polymerase chain reaction was invented by carey mullis and again he received nobel prize for this invention of the pcr now these are the events that took place in the molecular biology in the field of molecular biology okay so many of the students from the chemistry might to be uh, might be knowing about molecular biology but still i will repeat so molecular biology is a field in which we study about the dna rna and proteins so what we study about the dna we study about the dna replication dna mutation and dna repair then we study the process of transcription how a dna molecule code for the rna molecule how a rna molecule is being synthesized with the help of rna polymerase by by reading the dna sequence the process is called as transcription and then there is a process called as translation in which 
a protein molecule is synthesized by reading the sequence of RNA, particularly mRNA, messenger RNA. Okay, so this is a, this is called a central dogma of molecular biology. The DNA got translated, then DNA got transcribed into RNA, and RNA got translated into protein. So actually, the proteins they are coded by the DNA. We can say the final effector molecule. That is protein molecules, they are coded by the DNA itself. Okay. So these developments, which are shown here in the blue color background, these are the developments in the field of molecular biology. Now, simultaneously, I will show you the developments that happen in the field of bioinformatics. Because I want to show you how bioinformatics develop uh, along with the molecular biology. They both go hand in hand. Okay, so in this pink color boxes, you can see these are the developments in the field of bioinformatics. You can see in 1966-67, uh, there was a development of, uh, oh, sorry, there was, there was an establishment of first database. The database name is Atlas of Protein Sequences and Structure. It was established by Margaret Dehoff. Okay. Then in 1969 around, ARPANET was developed. It is early internet. Now ARPANET was developed by US military for their internal communication, for their internal exchange of the data. They established a network of computers, which is called as ARPANET. And later on, it got transformed into World Wide Web, that is the internet. Then in 1970, there was first algorithm was written for sequence alignment that was written by Nidelman and Munch. Then in 1973, there was an establishment of PDB, that is Protein Data Bank, means where the protein sequence and structures were stored. And then in 1982, there was an establishment of a database known as GenBank. Now, GenBank is a nucleotide sequence database. Okay, so now you can see here absolute correlation of a molecular biology and bioinformatics. Look, in 1955, Sanger determined the protein sequence of insulin. Now, of course, after that, many of the different scientists must have determined the protein sequence of different proteins. So, in order to store that protein sequence information, Margaret Dehoff established the database. Called as Atlas of Protein Sequences and Structure. Understand? Then, when you have to compare more than one sequence with each other, if you want to compare two sequences with each other, the process is called as sequence alignment that we will be learning in next few sessions. So, for sequence alignment, some methodology have to be employed. Understand? So. The, that methodology was developed, that algorithm was developed by Nidelman and Bunch. First, first algorithm for the global alignment. It was developed in 1970 by Nidelman and Bunch. Then, protein, protein structures, people start to determine the protein structure by X-ray crystallography or NMR. Now, that resulted into production of protein structure data. So, for the storage, उस प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर डेटा के स्टोरेज के लिए फिर नेशनल ब्रुक हेवन लैबोरेटरी ने क्या किया दे एस्टैब्लिश वन डेटाबेस नोन एज पीडीबी प्रोटीन डेटा बैंक एंड लुक हियर इन 1977 और uh, 78 देयर वाज अ डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मेथड ऑफ डीएनए सीक्वेंसिंग मैक्सिम गिलबर्ट की मेथड थी एंड देयर वाज अ सेंगर डीएनए सीक्वेंसिंग मेथड तो व्हाट हैपन पीपल स्टार्टेड टू डिटरमाइन द डीएनए सीक्वेंस now, in order to store this DNA sequence, nucleotide sequence database was established that was GenBank. Understand? And in 1985, PCR, that is polymerase chain reaction, was invented by Carrie Mullis. And with the help of PCR technique, we can amplify the very small amount of DNA into billions of copies. Okay, so that's very important uh, technique in the field of molecular biology and recombinant DNA technology. Then in late 1980s, late 1980s, around in 1988, there was an initiation of Human Genome Project. 
human genome project now what is human genome project human genome human, the objective of the human genome project to determine the complete genome genomic dna sequence of a human genome and to have a complete map of it that was the objective of human genome project then in 1995 first bacterial genome sequence was determined that bacteria name is haemophilus influenzae so haemophilus influenzae was the first bacteria whose entire genome sequence was determined by the scientists then in 1996 yeast genome sequence was determined and in 2001 first human genome draft was published and in 2003 complete genome sequence of human was published now similarly you can see there was establishment of swiss prod database now swiss prod database is a protein sequence database that was maybe established in 1996 1986 sorry 1986 swiss prod it was established by swiss institute of bioinformatics but now it is maintained by ebi that is european bioinformatics institute so swiss prod database was established there then in 1988 there was establishment of ncbi national center for biotechnology information now ncbi is an institute in the usa which actually maintain the different types of database in the field of bioinformatics and they also host and develop the various computational tools then in 1988 there was development of a fasta tool now fasta is a program it is a program to search for database similar uh, database similarity searching means if you have a query sequence dna or protein sequence that fasta program will search the matching sequence from the database that we will that again we are going to learn in detail in next few sessions then similar tool to fasta was developed by stephen alt school the name of the tool is blast basic local alignment search tool then in 1991 world wide web that is internet was established in 1992 ebi that is european bioinformatics institute was established so you can see as molecular biology is progressing as years are passing and we are generating more and more amount of data there was a development of bioinformatics where we established tools and databases for the storage of the data and for the analysis of the data okay now you can see here uh this is the advanced genomics uh, laboratory where this automated dna sequencing machines they are working 24 by 7 for 365 days and uh, they are determining the genome sequences of various organisms you know in the human genome project 200 uh, this automated dna sequences they were working tremendously hard 24 by 7 for 365 days to determine the sequence so when sanger developed his method of dna sequencing at that time he was using radioactive material for the purpose of identification of the sequence and he also performed the process of auto radiography and finally he got the sequence but as this radioactive material was replaced by fluorescent dyes the automation become possible and the first company who developed this automated dna sequencer it was applied biosciences and they automate this sanger dna process and they replace this radioactive material with the fluorescent dyes understand and with the help of these machines you can determine the uh, sequence of 96 samples at a time or maybe 384 samples at a time depending on which kind kind of plate you are using okay so what happened initially when sanger's method was performed by the people which was totally a manual process it take a lot of time to determine the small dna sequence but with the help of this automated dna sequencing machines 
scientists are now able to determine the large amount of DNA sequence in a smaller amount of time. So when we have this automated DNA sequencing machines, everyone started to determine the sequence. Now, initially when these automated DNA sequences were not there, scientists must have spent their entire life on researching on a single gene or researching on a single protein. But as soon as this automated DNA sequencers become available in the market and uh, because of competition, they become more and more cheaper or because of advancement in technology, more and more new techniques come into the market of sequencing. Scientists shift their focus from the single gene to entire genome. They started to determine the sequence of entire genome. Instead of determining the sequence of a single gene, एक जीन का सीक्वेंस डिटरमाइन करने के जगह पे अभी वो क्या करने लग गए दे फोकस ऑन एंटायर जीनोम जीनोम मींस द एंटायर सेट ऑफ डीएनए दैट इज प्रेजेंट इनसाइड द सेल तो पूरा का पूरा जीनोम सीक्वेंस अभी डिटरमाइन करने लग गए क्यों क्योंकि ऑटोमेटेड डीएनए सीक्वेंसिंग मशीन्स आए एंड मल्टीपल टेक्नोलॉजीज कम इनटू द मार्केट एंड अ मशीन बिकम चीपर द टेक्नोलॉजी बिकम चीपर सो नाउ एवरीवन कैन अफोर्ड इट so that results into exponential increase in the data of dna sequence so in the red color in red color you can see these are the number of sequences determined in millions so you can see after 1990s after 1990s when this uh, when human genome project was already started by using this applied biosystems automated dna sequence so you can see there is an exponential rise can you see up to 1994 there was the the line is very flat but after the advent of this automated dna sequencers this graph or this line has is rising exponentially because more and more people now started to determine the genome sequences and also in this blue color line it is a number of base pair in billions means how many base pair sequence has been already determined that is shown in the blue color line okay so when i when i show you this sequencing machine now this sequencing machine they depends on sanger method so they are also called as sanger sequencer sanger automated sequencer the company who has developed it is applied biosciences but now in the market this is not the only technology available apart from that there is another techno technique called as pyro sequencing now on the basis of pyro sequencing some automated dna sequences were developed called as 454 sequencer which are now sold by roche company of the usa then iron torrent sequencers are there which is manufactured by invitrogen iron torrent sequencing and today we have this next generation sequencing platforms like uh this illumina so lexa or solid now this next generation sequencing platforms are able to determine the entire genomic dna sequence in a single reaction ye jo abhi naye sequencing machines aaye hain jinko hum log next generation sequencing platform kehte hain wo ek reaction mein pura ka pura genome sequence determine kar sakte hain so a very huge capacity uh now we have and that's why this number of dna sequences or number of billions of base pair of the dna sequences has been increased exponentially now when i say genome the genome indicate that the entire dna present inside the cell now this dna size or the genome size it varies according to species like a very simple bacteriophage that is t2 bacteriophage it has around 170000 base pair in its genome but there are many viruses there are many plant viruses or animal viruses whose total genome size is just 5 to 6000 base pairs they have very small genome size then e coli e coli is a very simple bacteria and uh, that has been extensively used in the field of microbiology or for any kind of research purpose we can use e coli as a model system now this e coli single cell has around 4.6 millions of base pair in its dna i am talking about single cell 
सिर्फ एक सेल के डीएनए में कितना सॉरी एक सेल के एक सेल के अंदर कितना बड़ा डीएनए है 4.6 मिलियन ऑफ बेस पेयर वन मिलियन मीन्स टेन लैख तो ये कितना हो गया 46 सिक्स लैख बेस पेयर मतलब वो जो बेस पेयर मतलब ए टी जी सी जो होता है ना ए पेयर विथ टी जी पेयर विथ सी तो ऐसे कितने बेस पेयर उसके अंदर 46 सिक्स लैख बेस पेयर आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ सिंगल बैक्टीरिया देन ड्रोसोफिला मेलानो गैस्पर दैट इज फ्रूट फ्लाई उसके जीनोम में है 130 मिलियन ऑफ बेस पेयर 130 मिलियन देन इन होमोसेपियंस ह्यूमंस द नंबर ऑफ बेस पेयर इज 3.2 बिलियन बेस पेयर नाउ दैट इज ट्रू विद द हैप्लोइड सेल सो व्हेन योर सेल इज हैप्लोइड एट दैट टाइम ओनली वन सेट ऑफ क्रोमोसोम इज प्रेजेंट एंड इन दैट वन सेट ऑफ क्रोमोसोम 3.2 बिलियन ऑफ बेस पेयर आर प्रेजेंट इन द ह्यूमन जीनोम नाउ 3.2 बिलियन वन बिलियन मीन हंड्रेड करोड it means that 320 crore of nucleotides base pair are there in a single cell haploid set of chromosome of a human and then paris japonica which is a plant canopy plant its genome size is around 150 billion base pair moreover you can see in this graph that as the complexity of the organism is increasing the genome size is also increasing मतलब जो बहुत सिंपल ऑर्गेनिज्म है लाइक बैक्टीरियोफाज और बैक्टीरिया उनका जीनोम साइज कैसा होगा छोटा और एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गेनिजम्स लाइक प्लांट्स और एनिमल्स दे विल बी हैविंग मोर अमाउंट ऑफ जीनोमिक डीएनए सो यू कैन सी द वायरस इट इज रेंजिंग इन बिटवीन अराउंड फाइव के बी टू हंड्रेड के बी देन कॉज बैक्टीरिया फ्रॉम अराउंड वन एम बी एम बी स्टैंड फॉर मिलियंस ऑफ बेसपेयर और मेगा बेसपेयर So one MB to around hundred MB. Then you can see here mammals. At last, the size is in between two GB to let's say eight GB. And for some proteins, the size is even greater than hundred GB. So as the complexity is increasing, the genome size is also increasing. Now these are the completed. genome sequences of organisms like up till now there are hundreds of uh, eukaryotic and prokaryotic dna sequences were completed to be determined around 3000 uh, prokaryote dna sequence complete genomic dna sequences have been already determined and in bioinformatics what we do the complex data complex dna sequence data or protein sequence data it is analyzed with the help of mathematical tools or computational tools and it is converted into knowledge so conversion of complex data into knowledge that is the function of bioinformatics so you must have an idea why this bioinformatics branch have developed because of enormous amount of biological data that is available the data is dna sequence data protein sequence data and protein स्ट्रक्चर डेटा हमारे पास में जो डेटा है जो बहुत 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 ज्यादा अमाउंट में हमने तैयार किया है हमने डिटरमाइन किया है वो कौन सा डेटा है डीएनए सीक्वेंस डेटा प्रोटीन सीक्वेंस डेटा एंड प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चरल डेटा एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एनॉर्मस अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा देर वॉज अ रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ डेटा बेसिस देर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर एनालिसिस ऑफ द डेटा एंड दैट्स वाई बायोफॉर्मेटिक्स गॉट अ मेजर बोस्ट so demand for the efficient computational tools to manage and analyze the data was uh, required the development of this computational tools depend on knowledge generated from the wide range of disciplines including mathematics statistics computer science information technology and molecular biology and the merger of these the, uh, discipline uh, this discipline created an information oriented field in biology which is known as bioinformatics so basically bioinformatics is a multidisciplinary area or field which include mathematics statistics computer science information technology as well as molecular biology is also there so see you can see the bioinformatics is touching all the different subjects like computer science is there chemistry is there biochemistry is there bi biology is there statistics is there mathematics is there and engineering also there then let us finally talk about the definition of bioinformatics so you must have got an idea that what is bioinformatics but still let us uh, see the proper 
definition of the bioinformatics so bioinformatics is an interdisciplinary area of uh, of the uh, at the interface between computer science and biological sciences and bioinformatics can be defined as a union of biology and informatics bio bioinformatics can be defined as union of biology and informatics bioinformatics involve bioinformatics involve the technology that uses computers for storage retrieval manipulation and distribution of information related to biological macromolecules such as dna rna and proteins so i will explain this definition to all of you with the help of some analogy abhi jo bhi data jo bhi data aapke paas mein hota hai use aap log kiske andar store karte hain you are storing that data into a very small computer that is present in your palm that is your mobile phone now mobile phone is a computer itself because it has a processor it has a ram it has a input device it has output device right so it's a computer itself abhi kuch bhi aapko store karna hoga koi photo aapko store karni hai koi movie aapko store karni hai koi file text file aapko store karni hai what you are using you are either using your mobile phone or laptop or desktop computer kyunki jab bahut bada data hamare paas mein hota hai to hame storage ke liye ek hi option pata hai that is computer right all of you are now seeing in your college all the student data where it is stored whether the clerk is writing that data in the register or everything is stored in the database or a server computer of the college everything is stored in the in that server aap bank mein jaate ho all the customer data is stored in some server computer right so for storage koi bhi prakar ka data agar aaj hame store karna hai then we are using computer baad mein aap kya karte ho data ko sirf store kar karke rakhte ho kya nahi you also get it back so to get back the data from the computer the process is called as retrieval retrieval of the data aap log kaise retrieve karte ho computer se data aap log us folder ke andar jaate ho डबल क्लिक करते हो देन यू गो टू दैट फाइल डबल क्लिक ऑन द फाइल एंड दैट फाइल विल ओपन दिस प्रोसेस इज कॉल्ड एज डेटा रिट्राइवल लेकिन ये डेटा रिट्राइव करने के लिए आपने क्या किया अगेन यू यूज कंप्यूटर राइट यू यूज दैट विंडोज एक्सप्लोर यू यूज माउस यू क्लिक ऑन दैट आईकॉन मतलब जो डेटा स्टोर है हार्ड ड्राइव में उसको वापस लेने के लिए भी हमें कोई ना कोई सॉफ्टवेयर की जरूरत पड़ी मतलब कंप्यूटर की ही जरूरत से हमने या कंप्यूटर की ही मदद से हमने क्या किया जो डेटा स्टोर है उसको वापस लिया वापस स्क्रीन पे लाया रिट्राई किया देन थर्ड थिंग इज मैनिपुलेशन मैनिपुलेशन मतलब क्या आइदर यू एडिट द डेटा और यू एनालाइज द डेटा लाइक सपोज आपने अभी एक कोई सेल्फी आपकी खींची तो सेल्फी को क्या करते हैं आप लोग यू एडिट दैट सेल्फी you change background you change the color you change the brightness you change the contrast right aur agar koi video aapne banaya usko bhi aap log kya karte ho you edit that video this entire editing or this entire analysis or manipulation is again done by a software aap editing ke liye koi na koi application ka use karoge suppose mere paas mein text file hai text file usko edit karne ke liye main kya use karunga computer mein I can use Notepad, I can use WordPad, or I can use Microsoft Word also, right? उसी प्रकार से हम लोग कोई भी डेटा को एनालाइज करने के लिए मैनिपुलेट करने के लिए क्या यूज करते हैं सॉफ्टवेयर का यूज करते हैं एंड देन कम्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मीन्स शेयरिंग शेयरिंग समथिंग विथ अदर्स तो अगर आपने सेल्फी खींची और आपके फ्रेंड्स को आपको भेजनी है या रिश्तेदारों को आपको भेजनी है कैसे भेजते हैं आप लोग यू शेयर इट बाय सोशल मीडिया देर आर सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स लाइक इंस्टाग्राम फेसबुक व्हाट्सएप एवरीथिंग इज देयर एंड यू जस्ट अपलोड दैट पिक्चर और दैट वीडियो ऑन दिस सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड थ्रू द इंटरनेट इट रीचेस टू 
masses so for distribution also for distribution of data also you are using computer because if you are using internet for this purpose then internet is nothing but the network of computers matlab distribution ke liye aap aap you are relying on the computer itself okay to abhi isko hum log biology ke perspective se dekhte hain ki ye jo computer hum log use karte hain storage retrieval manipulation and distribution ke liye वो बायोलॉजी में कैसे एप्लीकेबल होता है तो जैसे मैंने अभी आपको बताया कुछ स्लाइड पहले कि अभी हमारे पास में बहुत सारी अलग अलग टेक्निक्स है डीएनए सीक्वेंस डिटरमिनेशन के लिए हम लोग प्रोटीन का सीक्वेंस डिटरमाइन करते हैं हम लोग प्रोटीन का स्ट्रक्चर डिटरमाइन करते हैं तो ये जो डेटा है दिस डेटा इज एनॉर्मस डेटा मतलब हमारे पास में अभी इतना डीएनए का सिक्वेंस डेटा है कि अगर हम लोग उसको पेपर पे लिखने गए तो पूरी दुनिया में जो भी पेपर है कागज है दैट विल नॉट बी सफिशियंट टू राइट दैट डीएनए सीक्वेंस डेटा दैट वी हैव टू डेक अंडरस्टैंड तो उस डीएनए सीक्वेंस डेटा के स्टोरेज के लिए आप लोग क्या यूज करोगे फिर ऑफ कोर्स वी विल रिलाई ऑन कंप्यूटर्स फॉर द स्टोरेज ऑफ दैट डेटा क्योंकि मैन्युअली अभी मैंने आपको एक स्लाइड में बताया कि जीनोम का साइज कितना होता है बैक्टीरिया का कितना है ह्यूमन का कितना है प्लांट का कितना है इंसेक्ट का कितना है इफ यू इवन सी द बैक्टीरियल जीनोमिक डीएनए सीक्वेंस इकोलाई का 46 लाख बेस पेयर का डीएनए सीक्वेंस है कैन यू राइट इट ऑन द पेपर यू कैन राइट बट इट विल टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट्स एंड लॉट ऑफ पेपर विल बी वेस्टेड टू राइट दैट सीक्वेंस मैन्युअली एंड वैसे तो फिर हमारे पास में बहुत सारे ऑर्गेनिज्म का जीनोमिक सीक्वेंस हमने ऑलरेडी डिटरमाइन किया हुआ है सो मैन्युअली इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू राइट इट ऑन द पेपर इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू स्टोर मैन्युअली सो फॉर दैट पर्पज वी यूज कंप्यूटर्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ बायोफोमेटिक्स हम लोग क्या स्टोर करते हैं हम लोग स्टोर करते हैं डीएनए सीक्वेंस प्रोटीन सीक्वेंस एंड प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर हम लोग सिर्फ स्टोर करेंगे क्या नहीं हम लोग क्या करेंगे उसको वापस कंप्यूटर में से लेंगे व्हाई फॉर एनालिसिस पर्पस सो रिट्राइवल फॉर द रिट्राइवल टू गेट द बैक टू गेट बैक द डेटा फ्रॉम द कंप्यूटर और डेटाबेस वी अगेन रिक्वायर सम सॉफ्टवेयर्स अच्छा और सीक्वेंस डिटरमाइन करने के बाद में स्टोर करने के बाद में हम लोग क्या करेंगे उसका एनालिसिस करेंगे मैनिपुलेशन करेंगे उसके लिए भी क्या लगेगा कंप्यूटर बिकॉज You can analyze this large sequence data with the help of some software. So we we will analyze the sequence with the help of some software. That is computer part and distribution. Distribution मतलब क्या? Knowledge grows by sharing. मतलब ज्ञान बांटने से आपका बढ़ेगा. तो आप आप लोगों के पास में जो भी sequence data है, जो भी structure data है, जब आप लोग when you share it with the other people in the scientific community. then they will do the further research so distribution is very important part abhi hum log har kisi ko to jo wo sequence hai ya jo structure hai wo khat mein likh ke to nahi bhej sakte so how we will uh, distribute the data that distribution will be carried out through internet through internet that data will be open to all anyone can access the data from the internet understand and why we are using computer for storage retrieval manipulation and distribution we are using it for the information that is available for biological macromolecules such as dna rna and proteins matlab hamare paas mein jo dna ka sequence hai rna ka sequence hai protein ka sequence hai aur protein ka structure hai us information ke storage ke liye retrieval ke liye manipulation ke liye and distribution ke liye hum log computer ka use karenge in the bioinformatics that is bioinformatics so a very simple definition of bioinformatics is bioinformatics involves the technology that uses computer for storage retrieval manipulation and distribution of information related to biological macromolecules such as dna rna and protein now in bioinformatics we will talk only about these three biomolecules that is dna rna and protein the reason is that the reason is that only these three molecules are information rich jo information hai wo sirf in teen molecules mein 
there is no information in carbohydrates there is no information in vitamins there is no information in fats or lipids the dna sequence is not random it has some meaning to the cell right the dna codes for the rna the rna codes for the functional protein means the sequence of dna has some meaning and that meaning is understood by the cell and now we also understand that meaning because we know the genetic code and that's why we only focus on dna rna and proteins so that is the definition of bioinformatics so if you have any question any doubt you can ask yes yes anyone no sir So have you understood why this field has established bioinformatics why it is established can anyone tell me may i sir yes anisha yes so uh, since uh, there has been a need of uh, uh, storing uh, storing the uh, myriad of data that is being generated at a large scale uh, bioinformatics is getting boost that's why i think that by we we need a bioinformatics tool yes correct absolutely correct so as i have mentioned that this dna sequence data and protein sequence data that is being generated exponentially and this large amount of data can be stored only with the help of computers so we use computers here for the storage of the data but storage is not the only thing we have to analyze that data also so for the storage for the analysis and for the distribution we require computer and that's why this field of bioinformatics was established and it is developing and this new and new projects in the field of genomics or molecular biology it is giving boost to the further development of bioinformatics okay am i clear up till now yes sir okay now let us talk about the two sub fields uh, of bioinformatics okay so in bioinformatics there are two sub fields now one sub field it forms the foundation of bioinformatics and another sub field is a application part so you can see at the bottom you can see at the bottom this is the foundation of bioinformatics and this is the first sub field and this part application part it is a second sub field of bioinformatics so first sub field includes software development database construction and curation so uh, you know uh, when we store the data in the computer if you want to store it in a structured fashion we have to use databases like in your college also there is a student database where all the student data has been stored or in the bank server there is a customer database where entire customer data is stored in a structured fashion so these databases have to be constructed and they can be constructed by software engineers by the experts in the field of computer science they develop databases they construct databases and they curate databases means they maintain the databases then another part is once you have the data you must be able to analyze it you must be able to analyze that data 
now uh, again uh, many people will confuse that what is the data and what is the information what is the basic difference in between these two things data and information now let me ask you a question suppose i have a gene sequence a dna sequence whether it is a data or information yes so it's a data yes absolutely it is just a data because the definition of data is data is collection of raw facts data is collection of raw facts when you process the data when you analyze the data you will get information from the data so what is information then information is a process form of data understand what is the difference suppose uh, I, i give this example in the classroom also i will give you i, I will explain you with the example so suppose i have the rainfall data of ahmednagar for last 10 years pichle 10 saalon mein har din kitni barish hui hai ahmednagar mein uska data mere paas mein hai in the excel file excel file mein kya hai do column hai in the first column there is a date and in the second column there is a rainfall precipitation in millimeters okay तो अगर जब मैं वो फाइल की तरफ देखूंगा उसमें मुझे क्या दिखाई देगा इट विल बी इट विल बी हैविंग 3650 रोज दिन के हिसाब से और उन दिनों में कितना रेनफॉल हुआ है उसका वो डेटा होगा डू आई गेट एनी काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दिस फाइल और फ्रॉम दिस डेटा द आंसर इज नो आई विल नॉट गेट एनी इंफॉर्मेशन because that rainfall data is a raw data it is not process magar jab main us data ko process karunga main kya karunga main suppose main har saal ka har saal kitna kitni barish hui uska average samjho maine nikala matlab 365 days mein jitni barish hui hai uska average maine nikala aisa maine har saal ke liye kiya aur unka maine graph banaya histogram banaya That in 19 uh, sorry 2013 में कितना बारिश हुआ था एवरेज 2014 में कितना हुआ था 15 में कितना हुआ था आई विल गेट अ विजुअलाइजेशन ऑफ द रेनफॉल इन ईच ईयर लेकिन वो ग्राफ मुझे कब मिला जब मैंने उस डेटा को प्रोसेस किया जब मैंने उसका एवरेज निकाला फिर उस एवरेज से मैंने ग्राफ बनाया मतलब मैंने क्या किया है मैंने एनालिसिस किया है आई प्रोसेस दैट डेटा एंड देन आई गेट द ग्राफ and while looking at the graph i can tell you ki kis saal zyada barish hui thi kis saal kam barish hui thi kis saal drought tha kis saal excess rainfall hua tha i can tell you just by looking at that graph so that graph is information that chart is information aur wo jo pehle aapko sirf reading diye gaye the rainfall ke wo kya tha data tha data se hi aapne kya nikala information nikala लेकिन उसके लिए आपको क्या करना पड़ा प्रोसेसिंग एनालिसिस अंडरस्टैंड तो बायो इंफॉर्मेटिक्स में भी जो भी डेटा हमें मिलता है वो डेटा क्या है सीक्वेंस डेटा है डीएनए सीक्वेंस डेटा प्रोटीन सीक्वेंस डेटा प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर डेटा उस डेटा को कहीं ना कहीं तो स्टोर करना पड़ेगा ना तो उसके लिए हम लोग क्या बनाते हैं डेटा और उस डेटा को एनालाइज करने के बाद में हमें मिलेगी इंफॉर्मेशन उस एनालिसिस के लिए हम लोग बनाते हैं सॉफ्टवेयर जैसा मैंने अभी आपको रेनफॉल वाला एनालिसिस बताया वो आप कौन से सॉफ्टवेयर में कर सकते हो माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल राइट एवरीवन अग्री विथ मी माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल कैन डू दैट जॉब राइट वैसे ही जब आपको डीएनए सीक्वेंस एनालिसिस करना है प्रोटीन सीक्वेंस एनालिसिस करना है या प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर एनालिसिस करना है उसके लिए आपको सॉफ्टवेयर लगेंगे तो सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलप करने पड़ेंगे तो वो जो चीजें हैं डेटाबेस कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट इट कम्स अंडर दिस पार्ट दिस बॉटम पार्ट दैट इज अ फाउंडेशन पार्ट 
और एक बार आपके डेटा तैयार हो गए आपके सॉफ्टवेयर तैयार हो गए फिर आता है एप्लीकेशन का पार्ट मतलब यूज ऑफ द डेटा एंड यूज ऑफ द सॉफ्टवेयर वो कौन करेगा वो करेंगे हम लोग बायोलॉजिस्ट बायोलॉजिस्ट विल यूज द सॉफ्टवेयर एंड डेटा बेसिस दिस सॉफ्टवेयर एंड डेटा बेसिस माइट बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड माइट बी डेवलप डेवलप बाय दिस कंप्यूटर साइंस पीपल कंप्यूटर इंजीनियर और द एक्सपर्ट्स इन द फील्ड ऑफ दिस कंप्यूटर साइंस बट नाउ वट इज पीपल फ्रॉम बायोलॉजी ऑल्सो आर लर्निंग दो प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस लाइक पाइथन आर मेटलैब पर्ल जावा एवरीथिंग and now people from biology itself they are developing software that they are developing or they are establishing databases so let us come to application part which is a second sub field of bioinformatics so in application we do three different types of analysis sequence analysis function analysis and structural analysis so sequence analysis means we will analyze the dna sequence or protein sequence in that we can do sequence alignment sequence alignment means comparison of two sequences and finding out the matching residues among the sequences that is called as sequence alignment then we will perform sequence database searching here you can find out a matching sequence from the database for your query sequence then motif discovery gene and promoter prediction phylogenetic analysis and genome comparison then in case of functional analysis we can find out the subcellular location of a protein we can predict the subcellular location of the protein we can see the protein protein interaction gene expression profiling and metabolic pathway modeling then in sequence analysis we can do oh sorry we can in a structural analysis we can do protein structure comparison protein structure classification protein structure prediction and nucleic acid structure prediction that is true for rna sequence or rna structure so this kind of analysis can be performed by a working biologist by using databases and softwares that are constructed in the field of bioinformatics understand two sub fields of bioinformatics 